Welcome to the OBR Interactive Case Study Series. In this case study, Dr. Daniel Ahn discusses the advanced colorectal cancer in a 56-year-old female. Patient's characteristics included... So in terms of patient characteristics, this is a patient that we saw in the clinic. She was a 56-year-old female who initially presented with progressive dyspnea on exertion. Uh, workup revealed that she was iron deficient, so she had iron deficiency anemia. Uh, she underwent further workup, including a colonoscopy, which identified a non-obstructing mass in the cecum with CT scans that unfortunately showed evidence of liver metastasis. Biopsy revealed poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma with signet cell features. Patient's treatment history included... And so she was initially started on cytotoxic chemotherapy with full foxidary with bevacizumab. And while she, was experience, while she initially experienced a response to chemotherapy, she did experience a partial response at cycle eight. So after completion of four months of chemotherapy, her restaging CT scans and forms showed evidence of disease progression with worsening the liver metastasis. During her treatment uh, initiation, she did undergo further testing, including next generation sequencing testing, which revealed that she had, from her MMR IHC, revealed that she had a loss of MLH1 and PMS2. And it also revealed that she had a BRAF b 600 e mutation. Post-treatment challenges and considerations were as follows. And so when we think about the treatment paradigm for BRAF b 600 e MSI high colorectal cancer, there are several things that we take into consideration. Uh, when you think about BRAF b 600 e mutations, they're prevalent in about 10% of patients with metastatic colorectal cancer, and they tend to be associated with a poor prognosis. But when you look at specifically in MSI high tumors, the BRAF b 600 e mutations can be as high as 30 to 40%. And the rationale or the reasoning behind that is BRAF b 600 e results in the activation or aberrant activation of the MAP case signaling pathway, which can lead to the phosphorylation of the promoter resulting in a loss of MLH1 or uh, MLH1. And so these tumors can uh, occur sporadically and having both a BRAF b 600 e mutation as having uh, MSI high. And so recently, in terms of uh, more recent data, the treatment paradigm or the treatment algorithm may have shifted in terms of how we would approach, approach treating a patient like this. But as we know, in the real world patient population, we may not have all these testing results available. Um, recently, there was some positive data from Keynote 177 that looked at treating with an immune checkpoint inhibitor, specifically pembrolizumab in patients with MSI high metastatic colorectal cancer, which met its primary endpoint, which showed a doubling in progression-free survival with a response rate of close to 50%. And so that would be what we would recommend in the first line setting. But you know, oftentimes we don't have the results of this testing. So if the patient received induction first line chemotherapy and we had the results of this testing, the question is kind of where do we move in, the, in terms of the second line treatment? Do we move toward an IO-based approach with an anti-PD-1 uh, monoclonal antibody there, a monoclonal antibody in combination with an anti-CTLA-4 monoclonal antibody, or do we go through a targeted therapy? Unfortunately, there's not a lot of data, and we even when we look at other solid tumors that have both BRF b 600 e and receive IO-type therapy, such as melanoma, that current data is not really available at this time. And so, um, in terms of what I would recommend or prefer would be go to an IO-based approach. And so when you look at some of the studies that look at treating MSI high tumor, specifically an MSI high metastatic colorectal cancer, one study that comes to mind is Checkmate 142. And so in this study, they looked at treating patients with nivolumab monotherapy. So nivolumab, again, is an anti-PD-1 monoclonal antibody therapy. And they also investigated the combination of nivolumab plus uh, ipilimumab. And what they showed was um, in terms of efficacy, we can expect overall response rate with nivolumab monotherapy and being about 31%, but from the combination, it can be as high as up to 64%. So similar to our previous discussion or previous mentioning, when we look at the mutational status specifically in MSI high tumors, we can see that the proportion of BRF, B6, or E mutations are very high. Again, this is a very small sample size, but out of the uh, 17 patients, 13 of these patients did have BRAF B600E mutations, so about 76%. But when you look historically at the evidence, we can expect maybe 30 to up to even 40% of patients having both a BRAF B600E mutation as well as having an MSI high tumor. 
And so when you look at targeted therapies, the most recent study was the BEACON trial. So the BEACON trial was a randomized phase three trial that looked at treating patients in the refractory setting where patients were randomized to receive targeted therapy with either the triplet, with either with encorafenib, benimetinib, and cetuximab. So they received a BRAF inhibitor, a MEK inhibitor, and an anti-EGFR monoclonal antibody uh, versus the doublet, which was just encorafenib or cetuximab or they're randomized to receive full theory plus cetuximab. So these were patients that failed prior oxaliplatin. And so this data was presented, uh, most recently presented with updated data from uh, ASCO GI 2020. And we looked at the updated analysis, we can see that the, both in terms of the double and the triplet had the exact same median overall survival being 9.3 months. And we looked at the objective responses, they were very similar with being slightly higher from the triplet regimen compared to the doublet regimen. And so based off these findings, the FDA did approve the doublet regimen for treatment refractory, BRAF V600E metastatic colorectal cancer. Recently at ESMO GI 2020, uh, the ANCHOR study, which was a single arm study that looked at the combination of these targeted therapies in the frontline setting for BRAF V600E mutant metastatic colorectal cancer was presented, which showed a very impressive objective response rate of close to 50%. However, when you looked at in terms of overall survival, it was very, and progression free survival was very similar to what we observed from the Beacon trial. So future studies, including the Breakwater study, which is looking at the combination of with these targeted therapies with, with or without chemotherapy in the frontline setting will help us to better delineate about the role of targeted therapies for patients with BRAF B600E metastatic colorectal cancer. Patients' treatment history included and so in terms of the treatment history, she ended up receiving an pembrolizumab every three weeks when initially she had a good response. But unfortunately, after eight months of treatment, restaging imaging did show evidence of disease progression. So at that time, her treatment was changed to receive encorafenib plus cetuximab, which she is responding well to. In regards to clinical questions, would a patient be better to receive a doublet versus triplet. In general, most, most of us would probably prefer to receive the doublet versus the triplet regimen, where the triplet regimen may add, again, a slightly higher response, but does come with increased toxicities and no really differences in terms of overall survival. But if her cancer did not respond to treatment, you know, what would be the next options? Considerations could also include a regorafenib based off the correct trial or recently uh, TAS-102 in combination with bevacizumab based off the C-TAS-401 study, which was a randomized, which was a study, a randomized study that was conducted in Denmark, looking at TAS-102 in combination with bevacizumab, which showed a significant improvement in both progression-free survival and overall survival. So looking at the combination would be reasonable in the refractory setting. Um, if a patient were initially to not really respond as well to pembrolizumab, a consideration would be to consider adding an anti-CTLA-4 antibody um, if she did not respond well to uh, a PD-1 inhibitor monotherapy. But again, I think this is more than appropriate. You know, when we do look at the responses in terms of an overall efficacy of the single versus double doublet approach for IO-based therapy, most patients would probably just benefit. Most patients that will respond or benefit will probably just benefit from monotherapy and probably don't require the doublet. But again, in terms of the treatment paradigm, I think we can kind of consider. You know, chemo. We have to take into consideration chemotherapy, um, immune therapy, as well as these targeted therapies. And again, if this was a patient that you may see in the clinic, some of the treatment algorithm may have changed. But again, a lot of times we don't have the results for all this testing. So this is what happened with our patient. And so in terms of challenges and considerations, uh, when we look at in terms of the histology and prognosis, we know that BREF B600E MSI high metastatic colorectal cancer is associated with a poor prognosis. And then MSI high versus MSS status does not appear to impact prognosis with BRAF V600E metastatic colorectal cancer. Unfortunately, there are multiple treatment lines available for this disease. However, the optimal sequencing of therapies is not clear. In terms of how I would approach this patient now, based off the positive data from Keynote 177, I would recommend an IO-based approach first, followed by target therapy second and chemotherapy third, with considerations for either some of the tyrosine kinase inhibitors such as regorafenib or consideration for TAS-102 with the consideration for the addition of bevacizumab in the refractory setting. Thank you.